Hello everybody, this video is on the motion of a charged particle inside a magnetic field. Charges, besides being charged, can also have magnetic properties. Specifically, moving charges will allow them to produce their own magnetic fields. So essentially, moving charges will behave as magnets. And as a result, moving charges, which are magnets, will interact with an external magnetic field. In this video, we'll look at how moving charges will be acted upon by a force due to the external magnetic field. When it comes to understanding the forces on a charged particle inside a magnetic field, we should break this down into a direction for the force as well as the magnitude of the magnetic force because forces, remember, are vectors. The direction of the magnetic force can be easily determined using a very essential skill in physics called the right hand palm rule. The right hand palm rule is something that we can use to determine the direction of a magnetic force for a charged particle. In the right hand palm rule, the thumb will be pointing the same direction as the velocity of a positive charge. So if a positive charged particle is traveling towards the right, your thumb will be pointing towards the right. For negative charges, you need to invert your thumb, meaning that your thumb should be pointing in the opposite direction as a negative charged particle's velocity. So if a negative charged particle is traveling towards the right, you need to point your thumb towards the left. That means it is very important for you to determine whether the charged particle is positive or negative before you can start using the right-hand palm rule. That your fingers will point towards the direction of the magnetic field. And finally, the direction your palm is facing will be towards the same direction as the magnetic force. In this picture, your thumb points to the right, your fingers towards the top of the screen, that leaves the palm of this person facing upwards. So this is the direction of the force. The magnitude of the magnetic force acting on a charged particle is given by a very simple formula, QVB sine theta. Q is the charge of the particle, smaller v is the velocity of the particle, and capital B is the strength of the magnetic force in Tesla's. And the angle theta here is the angle between the velocity vector of the charged particle and the magnetic field lines. If the velocity of the particle is perpendicular or 90 degrees to the magnetic field line, then the angle here will be 90 degrees. Now let's apply our right hand palm rule on two charged particles. What is the direction of the force due to the magnetic field on the proton and the electron in this example? In this example, the magnetic field is going into the screen, shown by these crosses. For the proton, Remember that this is a positive charge. So we'll be pointing our thumb towards the right side of the screen as well in the same direction as its velocity. Now your fingers should be pointing into the page. So point your fingers towards the screen and your thumb to the right of the screen. Hopefully your palm should be facing upwards and your palm here indicates the direction of the magnetic force, which I'll call Fm. As a result for this proton, as it enters the magnetic field, it will travel upwards. What about for the electron? Now the electron is a negative charged particle. So your thumb should be facing to the right because this should be inverted or the opposite direction as the velocity of a negatively charged particle. Now similar to before, your fingers should be still pointing into the screen in the same direction as the magnetic field. By doing this, your palm again should be facing upwards and your palm direction indicates the direction of the magnetic force fm so in this case the electron will also be deflected upwards now let's look at a calculation example an electron is traveling at 5000 meters per second and the magnetic field strength of this magnetic field going into the screen is 0.25 teslas what is the magnitude of the magnetic force acting on the electron? So the magnitude of the magnetic force is given by Q smaller v, v sine theta. So we know the charge 
is 1.602 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs for an electron. The smaller v is the velocity of the particle, so 5,000 meters per second, and b is 0.25 teslas, which is the strength of the magnetic field. The angle sine theta here, just to remind us, this is the angle between the velocity of the charged particle, so this will be towards the right, and the direction of the magnetic field lines, which is pointing into the screen. When the velocity is going to the right and the magnetic field lines is going into the screen, the two vectors will make a right angle, so they'll be perpendicular at all times. So my angle here is 90 degrees. And this will give us a force of roughly 2 times 10 to minus 16 newtons. A very important concept to understand and remember when it comes to the motion of a charged particle in a magnetic field is that when the angle between the charge's velocity or motion and the magnetic field line is perpendicular or 90 degrees, the charged particle actually undergoes uniform circular motion. And this is because the magnetic force that's acting on the charged particle when the angle is perpendicular actually provides the centripetal force that is required to maintain a uniform circular motion. So let's have a look. When a charged particle, such as an electron, enters the magnetic field that is going into the page, you can use the right hand palm rule to determine that the magnetic force actually acts downwards. So this is a velocity vector, and this is the vector for the magnetic force. So this will cause the electron to be deflected downwards. Now, as the velocity of the electron changes direction due to this force, so let's say it gets to this point over here, the direction of the force also changes. So you can, again, use your right hand palm rule, point your thumb in the opposite direction as the electron because it's a negative charged particle, and keep your fingers into the screen. Your palm should be facing this way, towards the bottom left. So this is again your magnetic force. The magnitude here hasn't changed, but the direction of the force has changed. When the velocity gets to this point here, you can use your right hand palm rule once again, and you will see that the palm, or the direction of the magnetic force, again has changed. The direction of the magnetic force changes in such a way so that the angle between the force vector and the charged particle's velocity remains perpendicular. And this is a feature that we discussed in uniform circular motion. So whenever you have a charged particle entering a magnetic field that's at 90 degrees to its velocity vector, keep in mind that the charged particle will undergo uniform circular motion. And of course, when this is the case, it is the magnetic force that's providing the centripetal force. A charged particle enters the magnetic field directed into the page of V, and the strength of the magnetic field is B. We want to show that the radius of the charged particle's motion is always given by mv over qb. Now, this is a very important learning point because, as we just discussed, in any circular motion, the centripetal force must be provided by another force. In this case, this is the magnetic force. Let's call that Fm. The centripetal force is mv squared over r, as we learned in the circular motion module, and the equation for the magnetic force is qvb sine theta. We can cancel the smaller m on both sides, and as we know, we only get uniform circular motion for charged particles in the magnetic field if the angle theta here between the velocity and the magnetic field lines is 90 degrees. So sine 90 will simplify into 1. So we'll get a simple equation, mv over r equals to qb. By multiplying r on both sides and dividing qb on both sides, I'll get r equals to mv over qb. So the radius of circular motion depends on four variables. Mass of the charged particle, its velocity, the charge of the particle, and also the strength of the magnetic field. Notice how the radius is directly proportional to the mass and the velocity. So heavier the mass or faster the velocity, larger the radius of circular motion. And the radius is also inversely proportional to the charge and the magnetic field strength. So that means greater the charge, smaller the radius, or stronger the magnetic field, so the more Teslas it's got, 
smaller radius as well. An electron enters a 0.05 Tesla magnetic field at a speed of 1.5 times 10 to the power 6 meters per second. The magnetic field is perpendicular to the electron's velocity. And we can use the following data for this question. So we have a charge of the electron and also the mass of the electron. Calculate the magnitude of force acting on and the acceleration of the electron inside the magnetic field. The magnitude of the force due to the magnetic field is given by QVB sine theta. Q is charge of the electron minus 1.60 times 10 to minus 19. V is the velocity, so 1.5 million. B is the strength of the magnetic field and the angle here is 90 degrees. Angle theta is the angle between the velocity of the charged particle and also the direction of the magnetic field. And this gives us a magnitude for force of 1.2 times 10 to minus 14 newtons. The acceleration due to this force can be worked out by dividing the magnitude of force by the mass of the electron. So 1.2 times 10 to the power of minus 14 divided by 9.109 times 10 to the power of minus 31. And this gives us 1.3 times 10 to the power of 16 meters per second squared. Something worth noting in this question is that because the velocity of the charge is perpendicular to the magnetic field, the electron will undergo uniform circular motion. So the magnetic force here is also the centripetal force, and the acceleration that we worked out is also the centripetal acceleration. What about the radius of the circular motion? We can work out an expression for the radius by equating the expression for the centripetal force with the expression for the magnetic force, because in this scenario, it is the magnetic force that is providing the required centripetal force of circular motion. We can cancel the smaller v on both sides, and since theta is 90 degrees, sine theta simplifying into 1, and I can simplify this expression into mv over r equals to q times by b. And by rearranging, I can get r equals to mv divided by qv. So the radius of the circular motion is the mass of the electron multiplied by its velocity, so 1.5 times 10 power 6 meters per second, divided by the charge of the electron and also the magnetic field strength. And the radius works out to be 1.7 times 10 to minus 4 meters.